Hello, so in this video we'll have a look at 3D fan zone model with Influent. Uh, now this model is present under the cell zone conditions. Uh, once you select your uh, cell zone, you can um, uh, you have the option to switch on 3D fan zone. Uh, so let's first discuss why would you use uh, this model. So in many cases, uh, uh, it could be in ventilation um, and many other industrial cases, uh, we're more interested in modeling the effects of fan than the fan itself. Uh, so we could be more interested in modeling, let's say, uh, the pressure drop across uh, across the fan or the mass flow rate uh, the fan puts in to uh, that environment. So in, the, in such cases, modeling the actual fan blade can be computationally expensive and unnecessary. So we'll see how 3D fan model can be set up and how it helps us reduce the computational cost. Uh, so this is my model. Uh, it, it is, it's a box and there's a fan volume within here, which I can, yep, yeah, that's, that's the fan volume. Now in, in your usual scenario, when you're modeling the actual fan, you'd go about using either mesh motion or reference, moving reference frame. And in those cases you have uh, this fan volume will have uh, all, all the blades inside of it and that just uh, means meshing procedure becomes uh, more expensive. But in 3D fan model, uh, you don't need to have blades. So if I hide this face, you can see it's a, it's a toroidal region. This, this whole volume is just a toroidal region. So once I take my model into Fluent, I can, I can select the toroidal region inside there and I can switch 3D fan zone on. Once I do that, I have this tab uh, now visible and it asks me a few things. So the inlet fan zone, now that would be the inlet facing side of this, of the particular cell zone, which is your fan. So if I, okay. So that's the inlet and these are all the Right, so this wall would be my inlet fan zone. Uh, now, hub radius, tip radius, and thickness. These three quantities obviously depend on the fan model you're using. Uh, also, this toroidal region uh, that I created is, is, uh, is dependent on the hub radius, the inner diameter. And obviously, the outer diameter should be sufficiently large to encompass the blade, uh, the, the blade tip radius that you specify here. Uh, the thickness in this case is not the thickness of the blade, but it's the thickness of the, uh, it's the thickness of the area that is swept by the blade. So it's it's the blade along it's it's the, it's the surface area of the blade along that direction. Uh, the inflection point now that's a measured quantity, and that would definitely depend on on the type of blade you're using. The fan origin in this case is not necessarily the center of the fan, but it's the center of this face, the inlet face. Now again, all of these uh, all of these information is available in the Fluent Users Guide and the 3D Fan Zones model. So it, it lists uh, equations as well as if you scroll down, it goes through all these uh, what all these quantities mean. Uh, what else? Uh, we also have rotational direction. You can specify your velocity. You can also limit flow rate through the fan should you want it. Uh, then you turn all of these equations on, tangential, radial, and axial source tone, Fluent calculates all of these for you. And once you specify, uh, turn the axial source term on, you have to specify a pressure jump. Uh, this is a data you can get from your fan manufacturer. Uh, once you've done that and uh, once you've done that and you have your other boundary conditions ready, you are ready to go. Uh, we can have a look at the results. Now again, since we are not modeling the fan blades and, and all of the features of a fan, the mesh is sufficiently small and it makes the simulation much, much faster. So once we have a look at this, so as you can see, this is a cross section. So that's that's where the fan, uh, fan zone is. As you can see, it's clearly uh, putting in a flow rate through uh, without actually modeling the blade. And what this does is it, it, it produces a sort of uniform uh, velocity field around where the fan is. And you can see the effects of that 
away from the fan as well. So if I can create a new plane just where the fan is right in the middle what we can do is we can see how it treats the fan zone. So as you can see it's uh, it's treating it as sort of a homogenized uh, velocity field and it's just putting across the flow rate and the and, and the pressure jump you mentioned in, in your inputs and what this does is it highly reduces uh, your computational time so that was the 3d fan zone model thank you for listening